relationship with time such that when one experiences life as a net caster rather than as a spear fisherman, one casts lots of nets and then one has the sadness of knowing that those nets have to be kept track of and they have to be returned to and they have to be reeled in and fish have to be taken from them. And that's just be thrown out again. It's a big pain in the ass. As a netcaster, as a consequence, I've become a very poor netcaster, which means I never remember where my nets are. I just throw out so many nets that I stumble across old nets periodically. And that's my technique for catching fish. It's a really shitty technique. And so the sadness is that whenever you do anything, and you know, now I have to wait for it to do its own thing on its own that it does. That's the sadness. No, I'm talking about anything. For example, I planted pot seeds yesterday in the planter in the front. There's a deep sadness about that. Why? Or two days ago. Because what could be more weighty than that? You have to wait. There's waiting. You don't know what's going to happen. You just letting it do stuff on its own without you doing anything at all. You're not making any new meaning about it. Those seeds aren't going to get ready to harvest into actual buds I smoke until the fall, no matter how much meaning I make about it. I could talk about, well, if I covered them with trash cans at this certain time, I could get them to bud early, and then maybe if I get them deeply enough in the budding cycle, they just keep budding out through the... Uh, I could do all that meaning making. I'd probably never do the actual thing, and it'd be pointless. So that would be an example of activities or seeds in general, things that you, as it's very difficult for me to intentionally plant metaphysically or metaphorically to plant seeds in the world with clear intent. I'm much better at strewing them randomly. Being better at streaming something randomly, of course, not really making any sense because a random only has one state of being. You can't be more good random or less good random. It doesn't make any sense. So that's the kind of nonsense that I, as Archpastor of the Eulorian Church, have to deal with in my daily ecclesiastical duties. Arch Admin Susie also is troubled by, I know her own ecclesiastical duties. We all have them. It's nothing but ecclesiastics around here. Arch Admin, do you have any comments on this important matter? No. How about you, um, Chris? No, I don't have anything. Okay. How about you? Uh, how you're an any dom? Do you know the sadness I feel? The sadness of ideas set in motion yet to be waited upon. Oh yes, it burns, doesn't it? it? Burns a little bit like the sun when you've been out in the sun for too long without any suntan lotion. I I have dark skin. I don't burn easily. Oh, but the burn of waiting is a burn that's peers right through your melatonin, friend. Your melatonin is no match for the searing burn of waiting. Explain a situation you don't understand it. Well, I'm saying I like shit. Like, okay, what's one of the reasons why almost all of my songs, but not all of them, some of them I actually finished executing, but most of my songs are published when they're about seven-eighths of the way there, or six-eighths of the way there sometimes, you know, which is the same as three-fourths. But, I mean, I get them pretty close, and then I go like, oh, good enough. Why do I do that? Well, because I can see this last stretch of shit. It's labor-intensive. It's like fixing every little fucking problem. And maybe I feel like there's a hole or something. I need, so I need to go to bed and sleep on it and re-ideate ideate it. If I got to re-ideate it, then all of a sudden it's a mess, maybe. Is it or not? Actually, I don't know. But see, that's where the sadness comes in. 
I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Am I going to know this thing is going to be better or it's going to, it's going to be wasting another couple of my hours and never manifest anything? It's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking out in front of me. There's a certain time to be evaluated. So what's going to happen in that time period? That's, that's a dark vision. That's a, that's a sort of peering for which my eyes were not made. That's looking at the horizon for the other pirate ship without uh, an eye, an eye extending telescope. Thoughts? Uh, Elsie, any thoughts on that? I think eventually the, the net will <clears throat> the net will condense and you'll have like a single vision. Meta net. Meta, meta, meta net. I think that's what like uh, any doms do. We can't we choose, we create so many options, but eventually we have to face the truth that there's only really one option in life. You can't live life twice, like multiple times or simul multiple lives simultaneously. Um, I don't mean to bust your chops, but I hope you're not letting these non in doms in on the secret of... <laughs> <laughs> what it means to have our special power. <laughs> Fully <laughs> <mine. laughs> You know the rules. INTPs have to work for like twenty or thirty years to get to get they prove their any strong enough. Then maybe we can let them know a little thing too. But... <laughs> we're not worthy, and we're supposed to feel sorry for. It's not that you're not worthy, it's that it's a dark power. We don't want it to consume your soul. Your soul's not ready for that. You got too much TI. That TI is going to get right in the way. That's what ENFPs and ENTPs have in common. We can we know when to put the TI aside, let the ENE just ride that horse all the way to the finish line. What you're gonna what what race you're in, what prize you get, whether it's a prize or, or a punishment, nobody knows. But the point is you ride that fucker. Well said. Um, it's a sadness. Well, Elsie, you're right. It was in that very race that the woman in the previous example did bruise her vagina on the saddle that I admittedly had made very poorly with vagina bruising, bruising bumps left unsanded down. That was not intentional. That was lazy. Okay. And I it's not in the video. I meant to say them down. I just want to clarify for everybody. I meant to say them down. I attempted to sand them down even, but then I thought, eh, they look at least kind of decorative. So I just left them there. And it turned out six month long recovery period for a bruised vagina. And she was my brand new significant other. This all happened this morning. I I just got in a relationship this morning and we went horseback riding with my homemade saddle and that's what happened. So now I'm faced with a conundrum. I can't break up with her right away. After all, I just bruised her vagina for the next six months. So that's why, what did we conclude? That yes, I would give her anal sex if she preferred it to, to give me blowjobs for six months. That's not really relevant to this topic, but nevertheless an important segue into why you shouldn't put it in a butt because there's poop in there. Thanks for watching Talk with Those People and don't forget to put the cheese. The any kind of fell apart a little bit. Yeah. Do you think that that no, no. no. Just no. Yeah, that shouldn't be. I think there. it did. I did think it did fall apart. I'm not denying it fell apart. I'm the one to say it fell apart. You're denying it, Susie. Stop denying it. It was kind of fun. Hey, I it probably Elsie, what do you like? like? <laughs> That video, that excellent video. Minus the bruised vagina. Bruise vagina. Oh, well, minus the bruised vagina. Susie's like, <laughs> that's a what lot you of think Eric in five minutes. That's like, Jesus, you just, I got my full day's allotment of Eric in 10 minutes there. All right, well, what are we going to make a video about now, Hal? Let's, let's NE some shit. Uh... Man. Hotel 
and him, how we in in some shit today. How it's going to bring a little moisture. I'm going to bring a little corrective sternness with my TI consistency. And together, we're going to make magic. Go, how? Uh, <laughs> now, that's rule number one. You can't put any on the spot like that, okay? Yeah. You can eventually when you're like older, but even it's, then, it's total like, freedom. Yeah, don't. Even then, it doesn't like the TI, and uh, hmm. you know, how really feels that because he has a lot of introverted feelings. So if he doesn't like something, it makes him hate you. A little bit, yeah. just a little bit. I want to call it hate. Everlasting hate. Everlasting hate. Do you, you have the opposite of Debbie Gibson's everlasting love? Hey, what are you drinking? I'm not drinking anything. No, it's not you. Uh, Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne's drinking? Yep. We got a new topic thing. right there. I don't know the English word. It looks word. kind of brown to be milk. What? No, it's like some orange concentrate thing in water. It's tang. Oh. Is that the thing? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah, time. So like lemonade kind of? Mm -hmm. Sort of thing, yes. I'll find a picture of it or Google link for it or something. Tang, not the slang term for vagina. Tang drink. Tangerine. Tang drink. Yeah, that's what? like powder. Not, not quite the same thing. But similar. Oh, yeah. Do they have Tang in Norway? Have you guys invented Tang yet? That's not the word for it, though. So what do they call it? This is what happens when any runs out of ideas. We go to SI for inspiration. And they call, do they call it fjord juice? Hey, no. speak for yourself, How? I, while, you're, while you're still, while you're going like, well, I'm not sure what to do with my any. I'm all the way fucking across the field already. <laughs> yeah, you sure like you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's some pictures of some Tang for you. Anyway, the point is, what do they call Tang in Norway? Soft. Soft? That's what they call it? Soft? Soft. Ah. Soft. Soft ah? No. Soft. So if I had to order food in Norway and nobody spoke English, the only thing I'd be able to get would be Tang. I guess some sort of it. Because that's the only Norwegian word I know for food. Soft. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get anything else at all. Because they have that no pointing rule in Norway. You're not allowed to point to food to indicate what you want to eat. You have to vocalize it. It's to prevent fraud. It's a, it, it stems from the old ways from the fjords. It, they, they used to do that a long time ago with fish down there. Anyway, yeah. if you say tongue, it's like seaweed. Tongue? Okay, so I can have seaweed and tang. <laughs> I can say, give me tongue if you, and if you, soft if you, say, if you say If you say tang, they will believe you're trying to say tongue. Tongue. So, Which yeah, also so can I mean pincers. Day eight. I woke to another breakfast of seaweed and tang. <laughs> And I can only remember just one more word for a food item. <laughs> and this one, oost. Oost. Oh, that's, that's cheese, huh? Yeah. Uh, I get, well, now I'm trying to have a meal. I got seaweed, I got tang, I got cheese. <laughs> I, I could make a soup out of that, maybe? How did you know that that was cheese? I remember from the previous thing. When I said oost, oost something, and then you said, no, it's just oost. Oh, I Remember? forgot about that. No, I don't. Oh, well, you probably didn't work on the video. I don't, it's like I probably remember it because I was working on that part of the video and I saw it like five or six times or something. That sometimes happens. Yeah. Planning my Norwegian vacation. I only go into places that serve tang, seaweed, and cheese. 
<laughs> I, I gotta find a 